guys are sitting. All right, so what goes into creating a stable SI joint? Basically everything. And that is the problem with treating SI joint patients. And that is the part I love. So it's like this awesome little puzzle where you have to have every single piece going in perfectly to have a stable SI joint. So strong core. So we think about we've got our pelvis and this is your SI joint right back here. Okay, on either side, all right? So where your sacrum attaches to your ilium, so basically the pelvis attaches to the spine, all right? So you've got what would stabilize the system, right? Transverse abdominals, abdominals wrapping all the way around, holding your pelvis from the top, all right? Huge stabilizers. Diaphragm, all right? Diaphragm connects into everything. Diaphragm putting pressure down to your pelvis, helping to control how your pelvis is sitting. All your other hip rotators, they attach back here, all right? So let me not move this in too many circles for you. So especially you look at like piriformis versus glute medius. So piriformis, which we talked about being one of the pelvic floor muscles. So piriformis runs this way, right down here in the bottom of your pelvic floor. So basically if your piriformis is overworking, you're gonna end up with pain, butt pain, right back here in your bottom. And it means your glute medius usually isn't firing enough. It's one of the things that uh, can cause piriformis pain, but just one. All right, so hip rotators, pelvic floor is huge. I mean, think about that for, we're gonna look at another anatomy picture, but remember the pelvic floor comes in and attaches to the entire bottom of your spine. So if you've got that giant anchor coming in, holding the bottom of your spine in place, I mean, that's going to fully stabilize the system right here. And that is a whole component. That's half of your assignment right there. Um, so, so as an iliacus. All right, now what the heck is the iliacus? All right, so the iliacus is a muscle that sits inside the pelvis. All right, so we've got the um, pelvic bowl in here. So you're looking at inside the pelvis. And it sits inside that pelvis and kind of wraps around and grabs your leg. All right, so here's where the leg comes out. All right, so if I'm the iliacus, I am sitting in here, and the iliacus comes out, wraps around your leg, and pulls your leg back in the hip socket. Now, today we're gonna to take a look at the iliacus. This muscle sits inside your pelvis and helps pull the femur deeper into the socket. All right, this muscle is critical for piriformis pain hip impingement in the front, so if you're impinging on the labrum, uh, soft tissue, and it's also extremely helpful for Itibian syndrome and pelvic floor function, all right? So that iliacus muscle has a big role to play. So let's see if we can get it firing today. One of my favorite exercises is from the Posture Restoration Institute. So we're gonna break it down, make it a little easier. We're not gonna worry about breathing right now. Uh, we're just gonna go through the correct motions of the exercise. All right, so what I'm gonna have you do is lie on your side with your feet on the wall, and you're gonna lift your belly just a little bit, okay? So you're gonna make sure your ribs aren't completely flaring out. So let's bring that rib cage in just a little and lift. All right, so you can see, actually it's a very, very tight core now. All right, now give me just a nice deep breath into your back body, Ashley. Perfect, fully expanding that diaphragm front and back, that's perfect. All right, now I want you to think about pushing your hip toward the wall. Very good. When you do that, try not to arch your back, okay? Very good. Okay, so the biggest mistake I see with this is people will let their hip hike up toward their head, and hip hikers tend to really overuse their TFLs a lot. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this hip toward the wall, then you're gonna give me a nice squeeze, engaging your adductor, your inner thigh, your groin muscle, all right? So get that adductor firing. And then you're gonna think about pulling back, pulling your leg back, bringing your femur into the socket, okay? Good, and take a break. That was perfect, actually, and this is a very hard exercise to execute. So cheaters, you don't want your TFL to fire, or your quad, and you don't want your hamstring to fire, and you do not want to clench your glute. All right, so glute clinchers that tend to tighten their pelvic floors and tighten their glutes in a bad way, they prevent that femur from moving back into the socket because this glute is so clenched and tight and it doesn't make any space. 
all right? And that's part of what creates the whole hip pain, the hip problem to begin with. All right, so you do not want to feel anything back here. You'll feel a little bit of glute medius activation and maybe a stretch across your glutes. So that's fabulous. All right, so no hip flexor, no quad, no hamstring. Squeeze the block and then gently pull back. Perfect, thinking about sliding the femur. Keep going if you can a little further. Perfect, thinking about sliding the femur back in the socket. And if you can notice, Ashley's not moving anything through her waist. So this is a literal slide of the femur in the socket. Amazing results uh, for hip impingement. Now, this exercise, if you have a major hip problem and you're not really connecting well with your hip, this exercise can be pretty much impossible to execute. So I want to go over a quick regression with you that makes it a little bit easier to do and can get this muscle kicking in and then you can give the PRI exercise a try. So flip over on your hands and knees for me, Ashley. Perfect. So what we're going to do here is we're going to still think about bringing the hip into the socket. So you're going to keep your toes connected to the ground. Bring your head up in line with your body, tucking your chin. Wonderful, nice neutral spine, good. And then what I'm gonna have you do is think about lifting your knee off the ground, bringing your hip up. Very good, and you guys can see how she is bringing her hip up. Good, try the other side for me. Very good, now ways I see cheating is instead of lifting the hip, people will shift, so shift way over and then try to lift your hip. So they'll shift way over and lift. All right, this isn't getting any gliding in that socket like we need the femur to move, all right? You're simply shifting, which is then coming out in your lumbar spine, and it's not good for your back, all right? This segment's supposed to be stable so these hips can be mobile, all right? So go ahead and lift again for me. So you're just simply lifting up. Try to make sure you keep a ton of length in your trunk for this exercise so that you're not hiking your hip up towards your head. Remember how that hiking is bad. So try this regression, super easy, then try the PRI exercise. A little more complicated to execute, but produces great results.